it's Maria with Artlink and we're about to do another one of our art projects. So if you purchased your art kit, go grab your bag of supplies. If not, stay tuned. You might have what you need and you can follow along with us. If you're interested in getting an art kit, go ahead and get to artlinkclerksville.com and purchase one and we'll make sure you get one in your hands right away. Otherwise, get ready. We're gonna create. Hello, my name is Maddie. I'm a volunteer with Artlink and I'm going to be the one that's teaching me virtual classes. Um, I hope you enjoy them. Okay, so this week we are going to be painting the rabbit. This is how it should turn out. Very cute. Um, it was Easter this week, this Sunday. So I thought it would be fitting to go ahead and paint a rabbit and teach you how to paint a rabbit. So the what you're going to need to do this is your canvas. I'm using the canvas panel, the thin one. You could use the thicker one, which is the stretch canvas if you want. Um, um the remove this. The stencil is just the flat not colored rabbit that you got the transfer paper which is the bl thin black paper um your paints paintbrush cup of water a palette or paper plate or piece of cardboard of some kind um a napkin or towel or something to wipe your brush off of and if you want, if you don't want um, paint on your on whatever surface you're working on, I don't mind. But if you do, um, a big piece of paper or a towel that you don't mind getting paint on or a piece of cardboard you don't mind getting paint on under it will work fine and will protect whatever your surface is. So the first thing you're going to want to do is take your canvas, your um, transfer paper, and your stencil. You're going to want to get the transfer paper and face it dark side down, light side up. It should be a very noticeable difference. And dark side down on the canvas, cover the whole canvas such as this, and then take your stencil and put it on top of this. Try to line the bottom of the stencil up with the bottom of the canvas. And then once you do that, once you're happy with your positioning of your rabbit and where you want it on your canvas, you're gonna take, oh yes, a pencil. I always forget that. You're gonna need a pencil. Um, you're gonna take a pe your pencil and outline, as you can see, very messy, because I've done this before. Um, outline your rabbit and the flowers and the foliage and the heart and the whatnot. Just outline all of it and it should print through onto your canvas. Just outline it and just like this, just straight through. Doesn't matter how messy it is, if you mess up a little bit, it's fine. You just need somewhat of a outline on your canvas. It can be just a vague outline of what the bunny looks like and where everything is. So it looks just like this. Or just like that. But without the shading and whatnot. And then once you're done with that, it should come out. As you can see, it's very messy, but that's fine. If yours is messy, that's totally fine. 
Um, just like a vague outline of the bunny and where you should paint. Okay. Okay. So now that we have our stencil done, you can put that away and get all your paints out and ready to start actually painting the rabbit. Um, I'm going to start with the background because it's just going to be a solid color and it's going to be the easiest to do first. I would think pastels would look the best. You can do whatever color you want. I'm doing like a very pastel pink, like that. Um, you could also do a purple or a light green or a light yellow or light blue or whatnot. I'm just gonna do a pink because it's very pretty. This is just the red and white, of more so white than red. And then if you wanted to do a lot lavender, you just make purple, red and blue and add white. Again, more so white than purple. If you want that super pastel look, same with all the other colors. But you just going to Fill in all of the background and all around the bunny and the flowers and stuff. The most tedious part of this step is just going around the very edges and getting in the small nooks and crannies of the rabbit and the flowers. But, and such a small brush, it's, might take a while. That's fine. I'm gonna leave that part open because there'll be flowers there probably, or leaves or something of the sort. Make sure your brush is somewhat caked in paint so there's like always paint on it because not nah, then it's just gonna run out really fast you don't just have to go back and forth and back and forth you want to fill as much as you can in one area it's one trip from back and forth I would suggest putting on music while we do this. So, the awkward silence of me painting and you painting is not as noticeable. And it's just painting and listening to music is the most relaxing thing that you can do, in my opinion.
You can just go over the little swirly part because you can somewhat see it under the pink. Sorry that the camera moved, I didn't notice. You can get very, um, 
don't know what the word is. Carried away with painting. Not notice certain things around you that you would notice otherwise. Which is a good and a bad thing, I guess. It's a good way to pass time. Which is what most of us are looking to do in this quarantine. <laughs> I just made an invisible leaf there. It wasn't in the sketch, but that's fine. You can add them wherever you want. If you think it could use a leaf, then you can put a leaf. If you think you can use a flower, you can put a flower. You can give your rabbit a specific pattern if you want. All right, well, once you get the background done, we're gonna move on to painting the rabbit. Clean off your brush and your water, wipe it off. And then go, I'm going to be making a white bunny with a little bit of brown, but just get your white or whatever color you're making your rabbit. I'm gonna go with white, cause it's cute and easy. Just, even though I know the canvas is white, it seems a little bit of a waste of time. But the white paint is a different shade of white than the canvas is. And it'll just make your rabbit look a lot more finished. Go around and it'll cover up all of the pencil markings from the stencil. So that's always good. Make it look a lot more finished. Make that ear a little bit bigger. Fill in all of the bunny with the white. Things like this, the eye, doesn't matter if you can see it through, but things like these other markings, you're gonna have to go over a couple times to just cover up. But you're gonna wanna like see like the, where the nose and stuff is. So it doesn't matter if those peek through. So don't, don't stress about it. And if you got a little pink on the bunny, then that's fine. You can just, or whatever your color your background is. You can just go over it with the white a couple times and it'll cover it up. Acrylic paint's very opaque. So, it's pretty easy to cover stuff up. Any little mm, mistakes or accidents. Just cover it up. Here I made this 
ear bigger so it's a little bit sorry it's a little bit translucent so I'm gonna go back with the white and go back over it so it's a, just straight white and then all these lines that you can see from where I messed up stenciling go over it with white and it should cover it up a little bit more and then all the spots you need to That's good. And then once you've filled in the bunny, I made a very dark brown with the colors I have, which it to make it, it takes a little bit of working the paint. Um, I started with yellow and then added red to make an orange. And then I added blue, which made like a dark murky green color. And then from there just added reds and then more yellow and then a little bit of blue until it became the, this like brown color. So you can do that. Make sure you clean off your brush. It takes a little bit of working. So you can go ahead and do that. Just mix it all together until you get very dark brown like that and it's going on the nose so just put it right there in line and then go up white paint shouldn't be all that dry yet so if it like smudges like that that's what you want so just keep doing that up and then once you get to like there you're gonna want to don't uh you don't have to put your brush in your water you can just wipe it off on a napkin or something you just don't want a little bit of the brown on there and then get a very small amount of white and just start blending it into the white and then if once it starts like getting straight brown again just wipe it off on whatever you're using. Go back in with white and just keep doing it until it's totally blended into the white. If you want to make the this a little darker, which I do, you can just keep you just add more and then just do the same exact thing. You put it down and then drag it up. And then just add a white. And if you add too much white, it's fine. Just wipe the white off and start down here. And just go up. Until it's to your liking. It's just a very cute nose that adds a little bit of uniqueness to the bunny, so it's not just a white bunny. It has a little cute brown nose. Just like that. This is 
a little bit messy right here. I'm mad. Um, oh, this brown is going to be used a lot in with the bunny. So you're gonna need a good amount of it, but try not to use all your paints at once. So just build up small amounts layer by layer. And you should look something like this. Just all blend it out into the white of the bunny. You can stop the brown anywhere. You can stop it up here and just, just try not to work it all the way up here. I, I like it all the way up there. It makes it look cuter. Actually, might bring some white down if you don't want it all the way up there. <coughs> oh, excuse me. If you see little spots that you didn't see earlier with the white, you can go again and fill it in anytime. Just take your time doing it, enjoy the process. Like that. Oh, I messed up a little bit. That's fine. If you don't want any more brown on your brush, then just go and put it in the water. Rinse, rinse it off. Just want to get rid of all that brown that I just put there on your plant. And yeah, it's a cute little bunny nose. Rinse the brush off so you can go in, throw the water off, and then go back into the brown and flatten out your brush to where it's like thin, like that. Just like that, with the brown. Make sure there's a good amount, but make sure that it's not like lumpy. So it's just like that. And then you go into its little mouth. My hands are shaking a little bit. Shake your hands, that's fine. Just take your time. Pre pressure is a big part of this. Depending on how much pressure you put down, it depends on how thin the lines are gonna be. I'm trying my very best to make sure the lines are somewhat thin and just line the mouth just like that and then I'm going to rinse my brush off a little bit and I'm going to take some of the brown not all of it just a little bit of it and Put it in another space on whatever palette or paper plate or whatnot you're using and mix some white with it to make the brown a little bit lighter. 
actually a lot lighter. You can make different levels of how light you want it, depending on how light you want it. You can start with a lot of white and then a small amount of brown. Make very light um, color. Or you can do the opposite and make it just a little bit lighter than the base color. And then once you did that, this is mm, what kind of a color I'm going with. And um, I think I'm gonna also flatten it out just like I did with the other. Make it, you know, flat on one side, and pointy, and then use the pointy like this and do start from the edge of the oh wait messed up a little bit that's fine make him a little smile not actually I don't think he's actually smiling I think it's just how his cheeks are but it's cute so what can you do I'm going to take a little bit of white and one, fix that mistake I just made, and just blend it out. You can use your finger sometimes if you want. Just do a little bit of a happy bunny. I'm also going to do a little bit on this side. Can use just like the remnants of what you used on the brush to just do a very small amount so it's not as noticeable but it's there you can see it i'm gonna go back in with some white and make sure this is all the same And then, once you do that, like I said, you're gonna use this brown a lot. It's gonna be most of the shading you do on the rabbit. You're gonna take the lighter color that you made. I made two lighter colors. I made a somewhat of a gradient down. There's the darkest, which is just like this. I did, I have this one. And I have this one, and then I have like a very light cream white, you know? And I'm gonna take uh, probably this color right here, and I'm gonna, and it's this color is just the brown and white, and you can make that, and I'm gonna line the ears. Just line them, you don't have to do anything yet. Just do good enough. Once you got that, you wipe off your brush a little bit. You don't have to wash it off. And then get some white, just straight white and start to try to blend it into the rest of the ear. I have to get more white, which is fine. Careful how far you blend it because you don't want to blend it all the way through. Just mostly right here. Which is 
so this is gonna be the darkest places. It's a very nice gradient into the white. And if you want the edges darker, you can take the straight brown And this should still be wet, so you just start blending it out and it'll just be a little bit darker than it was. I feel like this part of the ear should be pretty dark since that's like their ear canal. Kind of. I'm not a professional bunny anatomy person, so. But that's where their ear goes down. So, I'm gonna assume that it's gonna be relatively dark compared to the rest of the ear. And just t do the same thing you've been doing. Take the white. And just blend it. Keep wiping off your brush or getting more white. Whichever you think you need. And then that's that's about it. Sorry, drop the pencil. You got any on the white parts here you can just take white and go back go back over just do that all right i'm gonna rinse off your brush Wipe it off with your napkin and whatnot. And then take, do the same uh, sort of thing with the brown. Take it and, but this time we're gonna flatten it out. And do the same thing, just like that. And we're going to start on either side and just separate one the ear from the head. Just like that. It's relatively hard to do that. I'm far away because my hand's so shaky. Because right now it's on an easel. So. Yeah. And then take the white. And do the same exact thing. Blending it out that way. Bending it up into the ear. If you get any on the ear, that's fine. Just keep on the other ear and like on the head and stuff. It's fine. You can just keep working it up because you can cover the mistakes up with white if you want. Yep. Just like that. And then, like I said, just get the straight white. And go along the edges. 
to make it a lot more neat. You could do this anywhere. This here, around here, and the eyes, once we do those, around where the leaves and stuff are down here. Just around the edges if you get pink on him. Just anywhere, just use white. Cover it up. And blemishes. Yes. He or she. Whichever. Yep. Yeah. I think that's it for the ears. Ears, nose, and mouth. I'm going to start on just basic shading of the neck. There's no lines to do this. You can honestly do it however you want. I'm just gonna do the same thing. My brush looks like this. And take the white and brown mixture and do a little line like this. Just to separate the head and the body. Just a little bit, not fully, just those lines. Wipe your brush off and then take some white and do the, it's the exact same thing <laughs> with your blending. Probably not that dark. So just really wipe your brush off. Get straight white. Start blending. It's what most painting is, just blending. <laughs> A little bit messy, that's fine. I'm just trying to get it somewhat uniform. And then I'll go in and fix it. So if yours looks messy at first whenever you start blending, that's totally fine. Doesn't mean it's gonna stay looking like that. You're just trying to get as much blended as you can. Try not to take it as far down as I am. I'm just getting a little bit carried away. Just like that. I'm gonna take this white, because this is supposed to still be white. Do. brown off because I just want to go in straight white and just go along the edges cover up any stray brown marks that you might have brought up here Just fix it a little bit. Just keep and just keep going until you think it looks good. But to retract that statement, you also need to know when to stop it is really pretty hard to know when to stop shading
And then once you're done doing that, once it's to your standards, you're gonna take e do the same thing with your brush with the brown straight. Actually, I'm going to clean off my brush because that's probably a good idea. Take that brown and the same thing. And then go down and move the camera. You can see down here, just little feet. And then just align them with the brown. Just like that. And then wipe your brush off. Same thing, get white, and then blend. I feel like I'm repeating myself a lot, but it's, it's true, it's just a lot of blending. brought it up a little bit more than I wanted to. And don't forget about right down here. It doesn't have to be as much blended as all of this it's just the line but still make it look a little bit neater and more like the bunny I'm gonna take this straight brown and make this dark because that's where his arms are crossing very small amount of white. That's all you need to just bend that out until it's to your liking. Try to keep it in this little triangle here. You don't want to blend it out too much. Then you'll be here for hours just trying to figure out blending. Once you're finished with that, I'm just gonna do the same thing under here to separate the paw and the body. Just do the brown and then get some white. And it doesn't really matter how far you blend this because it's going to be shaded down here anyways because it's being covered up by the flowers and foliage and whatnot. But maybe not that dark. I'm gonna stop right there since there's a grass thing there and just cut it off. Small amounts of 
fixing small little details and whatnot on the rabbit's body or face. Just go back, just look it over. Shouldn't be that much detail work. All right, and that should be all good with the brown shading on the bunny. And then we can probably move on to the trying to show this. Oh, oops. There we go. The flowers and whatnot down here. Hopefully my phone stays there. It's a very dirty bandana I've been using. Um, the flowers, I'm, I think I might just go opposite colors for this. See, pink. And the background's pink. And I might, so I might do purple flowers. I keep the green though. Okay. Um, so, yeah. So I'm gonna go for some red on my palette. A good amount, I think, probably. Let me find them. There's like three. But they're pretty big petals. I don't want to run out halfway through. And then take some blue. Probably should have done this beforehand, but it's fine. Mix it in until you get the desired purple. And then I'm going to add a white to it. Or I'm going to add purple to white because I want it to be like a lilac lavender color. So I don't want the purple to overpower the white, which a lot of dark colors have a ten tendency to do. Ready to be obvious. Alright, this is the color I'm working with. Very pretty. Very. Mm -hmm. Start with this flower. You can choose whatever color you want for the flower. I'm just doing purple. You can just do pink again, depending on your background, or you can do uh, blue or I don't know orange. Any color. I don't think there's a color flower isn't, so I'm just do rainbow petals, just different colors. I'm gonna do all of them purple. Just to try to save time. And make them a little bit more uniform. I'm saving the eye for last because it's gonna be straight black. Because rabbit's eyes are straight. Black. Usually. I don't want to say all. But because there's like red eyed rabbits and whatnot. But this rabbit's just going to be. Have black eyes. Or very dark eyes. But it's going to be cute, so it's okay. Just fill in the. Flowers. 
the middle part is going to be a lighter purple, so you're gonna leave that open. Keep going all the way. Oh, why these flowers look so... Yeah.
right? <coughs> Very basic purple shapes that will be flowers very soon. Um, for the middle parts, I'm gonna take the purple again. Just make it lighter. To differentiate between petals. Make sure you keep a little bit of that super dark purple so you can use it to do the lines. Oh, whoops. And just very loose shapes. You know this isn't dry, but that's fine. Just like that. Just do all of them. Doesn't matter really what shape it is. Just like that. Just fill in those flowers. Take my very dirty bandana. I'm gonna rinse off my brush. Make sure you get all the water out of it. And then take that very dark purple that you should have made first. And on your brush, make sure your brush is like that. Because you want the small detail lines for here. On each. I have a hard time thinking of words. <laughs> that sounds stupid, but... I know exactly what word I usually say, but... I just don't say it, I guess. <laughs> See the flowers. Just like that. And do the same thing with all of them. Make sure you go back and get the purple. Make sure it's all flat on one side. On all sides, technically. And then very lightly. Pressure is key to 
putting the small lines or semi small lines. The painting's relatively far away from me, so I'm having a little bit of trouble. your brush if you messed up like I did and then go back to base color and just clean it up Clean your brush off. <coughs> and then I'm going to make the green for the leaves and grass. I'm going to take a big um, glob of yellow because blue overpowers yellow really easily and then the a good amount not more than the other just mix it all together you can add more blue or more yellow depending on the shade of green you want i'm going to add a tiny bit more blue darker green not super fond of neon colors so I might also take some of this green and add white to it to just keep the pastel theme going It's just a cuter color, I guess. A nice, I don't want to say mint, because it's not really that mint, but it's still a nice color, regardless. Well, I guess it kind of is a mint. <laughs> Just color in all of the leaves and grass pieces. Add any if you think there should be some.
fill in any of like the small areas like here with green. purple you can just go back with the base color for your purple if you have any left and clean it up Try to for all of the like separation of the leaves and the grass and stuff. Just keep in mind where those are or will be for when we go back with the darker green. Yeah, try to keep it the main green that you have. You should always keep the main like a little bit of the main color especially if you're gonna like blend or add a like little bit of shading and whatnot
All right. After that very long silence, <laughs> wash off your brush from the light green and wipe it off, get all the water out. Then take your main green and drag your brush in it. Works again. Again. So you can do the same thing you did with the flowers. Separate the um, grass and the leaves and add that for the leaves. Just anywhere you think it should go. Wherever you think it makes sense. Separate everything where you think it should be separated. If you want any of like the under stuff, this here, or this, or just like every other leaf, you can paint a darker green for more variety. And once that's done, pretty, if you want to add more detail to the leaves, I don't want to take up a whole lot of time. You can add an even lighter green to either side and then using the same thing with the base color, just blend it out. To make it look a little bit more 3D, you can do the same thing with the grass, you can add more grass, whatever. Um, but now we're going to move on to the uh, eye. Finally, you know, it looks wide. Yeah. Have your brush in it. Works thoroughly has black paint on it. And then go back up to the eye. Starting with the eye, my shaky hands and a really dark color. Oops. 
see how this plays out. I think that's the best I can do for now. Yours probably looks a lot better. It's just hard to paint from so far away. But that's fine. It looks good. All we need is that sort of shape. And then you wipe the brush off. And then we're gonna go back to the flowers for one second. And we're gonna revert back to the record painting, use the back of the brush, dip it in yellow paint, in the very middle, just do some dots, have to go back, just like that, as many as you want. gonna go crazy. Just dot them all in the middle of your flowers. Just to give them a little bit more. The same thing, but with white, go to the eye, do two dots, just like that. Oh, I almost forgot about the heart. You don't have to do the heart, you can just fill it in. I just find it very cute, so I'm doing it. <laughs> but I need red, so. I'm gonna do it in red. You can do whatever color. I'm just doing, you know, the basic part. Oh, okay, take some red on your brush. No. A little bit free. And just do the best heart that you can do. Obviously, for me, that's not a very good heart, but. Rinse it out and take your brush again in the black again. 
smooth it out on your brush to where it is. Again, like very thin. And do a little swirl. Mine looks not super great. <laughs> but when, whatever or if not you can probably use a pen depends on how wet your pen is if it's felt tip probably brush tip probably ballpoint maybe you just gotta be careful and then sign it I guess and that's pretty much it your bunny. I hope that this was fun. I had fun. It's very cute. I painted a bunch. And happy Easter for one. I never said that, even though this is Easter themed. Um, again, this is totally customizable. This isn't, this might not be the colors you go with. And yeah, I hope this was fun for you. I will see you next Friday. That wraps up another one of our art projects. So don't forget every Friday we're doing an art project. You can go to artlinkclerksville.com and get your art kit if you want to get one and follow along with us from start to finish next time. And be sure to tag Artlink Clerksville and post all the things that you're creating because we want to share them and feature you. Other than that, have a great rest of your day!